Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the Mercedes EQS 500 in Thailand. And guess what? This car is made in Thailand. <laughs> oh yeah, Deutsche Auto in Thailand. Well, actually, well, technically it's assembled in Thailand, but I like saying it's made in Thailand. Yes, proud to be a Thai, proud to be half German, and what was again half Chinese. No, wait, no, wait, half Norwegian and half yeah, whatever. So, um, but yeah, in this video, I want to talk about the Model Two or whatever we should call it. You know, Tesla, they have announced the 1st of March that they're going to, uh, yeah, they're going to uh, uh, have a, a new car, a smaller car, a, a budget car or something like that. We heard it in the, in the rumors, like the, the $25,000 uh, Tesla, right? Well, I don't know if that's the one that's coming now, but um, uh, I want to give you guys my thoughts about what I think Tesla will make. So... Um, Okay, so it's going to be, you know, something cheaper, like the, the, the something even cheaper than a test, uh, Model Three, and I wonder if uh, they, they, okay, well, how how is the car gonna be? Um, is it gonna be a hatchback? That one I'm not sure because I know Tesla they they like sedan, right? Model Three sedan, uh, Model S is sedan, but at least the difference is that the test uh, Model S is uh, it has a big hatch opening. Whereas Model 3 has that uh, trunk uh, sedan opening, which kind of puts many people off buying it. So I wonder if they will actually make a hatchback so they can uh, fulfill many people's dreams. Yeah, it's like the build your dream, right? But I'm not sure. Uh, because it seems like in Model 3, they, they made a compromise between uh, space versus uh, head headroom also because uh, the problem with electric cars is that uh, it needs to have a, a battery pack on the floor and that eats up some uh, very important uh, space like 10 15 centimeter or I don't know how much of space so then you have less space for people in the back or even front uh, so uh, crossovers SUV oh, that's a Nita Nita huh. It's like a cheap Chinese car. Um, uh, what? And that's Auto 3. Damn. They're, they're, huh? There are so many EVs in Thailand now. So, so uh, for crossovers, it's usually not that big of a problem because they are already kind of tall. So, but I, I predict that Tesla is going to make some kind of compact car, small one, uh, smaller than Model 3. Model 3 is 2.7 meters long. I'm guessing maybe 2. Point, no, sorry. Four, four, what did I say? 4.7 meters, yeah. So I'm guessing the Model 2 or I don't know, is it gonna be called Model 2 or Model A? I mean, we have sexy now. Sexy, Cybertruck is C. So they need they need a Model A, right? So they, they can make sexy cars. Yeah, and then S is semi. Yeah, yeah, there we go, sexy cars. So it has to be a Model A then. <laughs> but, um, wait, I need to. Need to hammer some uh, Thai people. They they always hug the the right lane. Yeah, the Thai boys. Uh, wow! The, oh, this car is so smooth. Uh, the road is quite bumpy, but uh, the suspension on the EQS is just uh, sublime. No, but but okay. So it should be called Model A, and then I'm guessing maybe it's like uh, it's it's maybe 4.4, 4.5 meters long, but I, I suspect that they will make it long-ish. Like, it's not going to be some short thing. Like, like it's not like a Bolt style or um, um, an ID3 style uh, car, uh, I presume. Because I, I think Tesla, they still want to make it kind of low-ish and aerodynamic. Uh, and also, yeah, okay, very important. They will most likely make it very efficient, probably even more efficient than Model 3. So it's going to be lighter, smaller, and cheaper, of course. And then, oh, oh, look, look, look at this power. Oh, I have to be a little bit careful because Thai people, they, they, they don't inspect a rocket on the roads because um, yeah, the fast electric cars, they're not that uh, common yet in Thailand. Yeah, look, 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 look. Oh, it, it has so much power, this uh, EQS. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, let me just uh, yeah, yeah, squeeze in there. The car is being a little bit Chinese. Uh, sorry for that. Okay, let me just cruise now. All right. 
So, um, oh yeah, by the way, I have to keep repeating this. I hug the right lane in Thailand. Let me teach you guys a couple of things. I don't know why I need to keep repeating myself, but I hug the right lane because the left lane in Thailand in general is quite shitty because road maintenance in Thailand is shitty. So the left lane is usually very bumpy. Uh, you could even damage your rims if you uh, camp the left lane too much. But I think I have to be over here. Yeah, especially if you're going fast like 120 kilometers per hour fault. <laughs> Any Germans here? Yeah, I see that this video is, is going to be a little mix, a little uh, rambling video, and then, but the main topic here is about the Model 2 or the Model A. Um, but yeah, so people bitch that, oh, but Bjorn, you bitch about uh, right lane huggers, but you hug the right lane yourself. Well, I actually move over to the left lane if I see someone coming fast from behind, which is kind of rare though, but yeah. And then you always want to hug the right lane when you're hammering it so you don't ruin your rims. So now you learn something new today. Yes, thank me later. Wow, the, what that was that ZZV? That's not a ZZV. The ones that has a teal color is the electric ones. So it's easy to identify these, uh, yeah. But, um, so back to the Model 2. Um, I'm pretty sure they are only going to offer a rear wheel drive version because they want to simplify production they go they want to make it as cheap as possible but also not shitty right i mean model 3 is actually not that shitty the interior looks nice looks even nicer than some german cars um what else um yeah i i think that's it rear wheel drive only no all wheel drive version and then i guess since it, it doesn't it, it will not have a rear wheel uh, 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 an all-wheel drive version they don't need to have a placeholder for for a front wheel uh, for, for a, a front axle drive unit so uh so they can probably free up some space and make the front relatively large and i think that's also important because people who buy those kind of cars they want to have good um, luggage space and you can get that in a tesla because tesla kicks ass for the lord uh, what the heck is that? Okay, debris. Uh, what else is it? Mm, yeah, I also suspect that they might use the same 15-inch Model 3 screen in the Model A because, again, they want to simplify production and I guess those screens are not too expensive anyway. So they might as well slap down that one and... Uh, uh, yeah, okay, you might wonder, maybe they should make a 12-inch a, a or, or a 13 inch screen right but remember that tesla uses the, only that one screen for uh, displaying whatever that will be displayed in an instrument cluster another separate screen behind the steering wheel so i think that they 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 don't want to shrink the screen uh, because then, then the, the the whole use experience will be worse so the, uh, yeah i think 15 inch should be minimum if you want to have like a screen only interface like tesla so, uh, yeah, these, by the way, these are just my assumptions based on, uh, I don't know, experience or just guesses or also maybe taste, yeah, or maybe not. Um, but let's see, oh, I have to check where I'm going here. Yeah, I'm gonna go straight here. I have to check, I'm going to Changda, by the way. So I'll do this and then remove next. Okay, there you go. There, okay. I have to make sure I, I pick the wrong, uh, the right uh, road. And then what else is it with that Tesla? Mm, yeah, uh, uh, very, very likely it will have uh, all glass roof and that's it and no option to not have it. Just look at Model S. Uh, Model S, earlier Model S, you could choose between a, a glass roof, panorama roof or, or the, the steel roof. And then eventually the later Model S, actually late Raven is a glass only option. And Model 3, Model Y, only glass. And I think also for Palladium, which is the code name for Plaid and the long range uh, Palladium. So that's it. Uh, I, I think by, by using only glass, they can then uh, 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 they can ha they can offer fairly good headroom. Yeah, without uh, too many compromises. So, uh, but I still wonder how they're going to do it. Is it going to be a five door, you know, hatchback? or how is it and how because the problem if they make a hatchback is that that hatch needs to be hinged somewhere and if you look at model uh, s for example you see that the hatch is hinged like right or not only not only model s but other cars is that usually the hatch 
where it's hinged is where the rear passenger will be sitting. Um, so then, okay, you get the hatch opening, which is great for bicycles or large objects. But uh, you then uh, you then get uh, reduced um, headroom for the rear passenger. But in the Model Three, uh, since it has glass all the way in the back, then you actually get very good headroom. So. I'm actually leaning a little bit towards that they're going to just sh make a shr shrunk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Freaking tie drivers, man, eating the lane. Yeah, but I, I suspect that they are going to make uh, like a like a Model 3 Mini, you know, like a short shrunk version of uh, Model 3, and that they will still have that trunk opening. Because when you start considering the pros and cons with various uh, solutions, I think they will, they might conclude that. Okay, it will be a hatch opening, but it will have good headroom, and headroom is uh, important for large European uh, uh, people. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what else is it? With yeah, and when it comes to batteries, I was also thinking, hey, are they going to put LFP batteries in there? That, that would make sense, right? But um, I actually think they're going to put fat cell in there, and it's going to be structured batteries. Yeah. So. Um, uh, because uh, LFP would make sense because it's cheaper and you know that's a cheap car and I also expect that uh, it will only have roughly 50 maybe 60 kilowatt hour by the time it comes out uh, in many many years like, who knows how many years it could take three to five years I mean actually technically it's two Tesla weeks but yeah it could take three to five years before it's out on the streets right and in that time they probably have better battery technology and if they have fat cells yeah, the fat cells should be ready by then i mean they are already using fat cells in uh, in some other tesla products right so but they just have to scale it up and i think the fat cells they can probably beat or match the price of lfp battery today's uh, today but then the fat cells they have other uh, better properties than lfp so that's my uh, prediction uh 50 60 kilowatt hour and also uh if you have uh, let, 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 let's assume 60 kilowatt hour maybe 55 yeah similar to today's lfp battery uh, <coughs> i wonder if if yeah i mean if that car is going to be super efficient like even more efficient than a classic ionic especially in winter because it has uh, uh octovalve then i'm guessing uh, 450 to 500 kilometers of range is going to kick ass for the Lord. Well, I already said that, sorry. Um, and by the way, when it comes to um, uh, Octovalve, uh, in Norway, there uh, there was a bunch, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Motor? Yeah, Motor in cooperation with NUF, I think. Yeah, they made a big uh, uh, range test in winter. Yeah, it's still winter over there. And uh, not surprisingly, the Tesla model, wait, well, it was Model S, but I'm not sure if it was Plaid or uh, Long Range. Hopefully it was Long Range. The Long Range set an all-time high record on winter range. Why? Because they have Octoval technology, they have alien technology. Yeah. So you can expect that, that, that cheap Model A, even though it's the cheapest Tesla, it's still going to be freaking awesome because it, it will inherit all the, the awesome tech of Tesla, like Octovalve, like uh, the software, you know, the battery tech, uh, all that stuff. But I, I also, I wonder if the, the cheapest Tesla will still have motorized lift gate and an electric adjustable seat and also um, electric adjustable steering wheel, because we already see that in Tesla, even the SR Plus, or it's called river drive now has it right so uh, i think they can actually offer that kind of premium equipment to even entry models because they want to simplify things and they don't want to have too many part numbers so yeah let me just focus a little bit here i'm a man so i can only do one thing at a time so which means that even the Model A is going to be very well equipped compared to other similar price cars. And then, you know, then suddenly we are in a in a different price range here. Since since we're talking about 25k uh, or something, right? We are suddenly competing against uh, some of the Chinese cars. Maybe MG4, maybe maybe uh, ID3 or 
maybe not leaf, what, leaf? Are they still selling leaf? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Something like that. So then, once you start comparing t uh, Model A versus uh, the legacy automakers, it would be, it would be a no-brainer because they cost about the same as the other cars, but the Tesla has then better, uh, better range, uh, lower, uh, lower consumption, uh, maybe better acceleration. And, oh yeah, I, I, I want, yeah, they, they will probably use the, the permanent magnet motor, the PM uh, uh, reluctance motor, motor, only that one. Um, and yeah, so uh, that car is, is going to be a no-brainer. It will probably, on, you know, this, all the spec will just beat the heck out of the competition. Uh, but also when it comes to charging speed, 50, 60 kilowatt hour battery, yeah, it will probably be something like uh, like today's. Uh, no, no. I wonder if it will be faster. Uh, today's SR Plus charges at uh, well peaks at 170 kilowatt. I wonder if you can get the fat cells out. If you can then peak at 200 kilowatt, it would be crazy, man. Charging at over 3C, but maybe that's possible. Yeah, but if, even if it charges at only 150 kilowatt, it will still be damn good. Yeah, in that price range, and also. But you you say yeah, but you know the competition is coming. They are coming. Well, they've been they've been coming for years, right? Uh, so um, so I actually don't expect the competition to to have any like giant leap in technology or anything like that. But just look look in the past. I mean, they have been slowly progressing, uh, getting slightly better better range, and they started adding uh, uh, like old school features like uh, like preheating before fast charging like tesla had already since 2019 so um well i'm just need to focus a little bit here i'm just trying to squeeze in no 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 i want to stay in this lane yeah yeah so um what else is it with that tesla oh yeah what about tow hitch hmm that is a good question will it have tow hitch i think tesla will be losing out on lots of cust potential customers if they don't have tow hitch uh 1000 kilograms uh, should be uh, plenty enough, right? I'm not sure about 750. If you have 750 kilograms, then that might not be enough. So, but yeah, uh, I really hope they make a tow hitch because it would be very attractive for especially Europeans. But actually, maybe also Americans. Also, some Americans also like to tow shit. But for example, in, in, in Asia here, you will see that almost nobody has trailers. <laughs> yeah, but they probably need to focus also on the European market, which is quite big. And then what else is it? Yeah, okay, okay. when it comes to headlights, again, you know, why would they make cheap halogen headlights or cheap LED headlights? They were probably going to just slap down the, the Model 3, Model Y headlights also in the Model A, of course. So uh, pretty much I, I expect or I suspect that all the good, good stuff that is already in Model 3 Model Y today, you will find that in the Model A, and then well, well, but 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 there must be something you are uh, or you there, there must be something you are not getting right by uh, getting that car. Well, hmm, yeah, still, yeah, I wonder what what is it that you're not getting? <laughs> uh, that is a good question. Maybe just a smaller car, smaller battery. Yeah, because by then, uh, other like Model Three, Model S, by then in three to five years, we'll probably have better tech. Right, so um, hmm, yeah, and I, I think it's going to sell at hotcakes because right now Tesla doesn't really have a car in that price segment, so you kind of need to go a little bit up in price before you can afford a Tesla, unless you want to buy a second hand, of course. Oh, yeah, by the way, but, but speaking of structural batteries, uh, many people uh, they they have uh, some thoughts about it that. What happens if you need to repair the battery? You know, it's, it's glued together with that, uh, and also, yeah, glued in and then sealed with that uh, pink foam. So it's impossible to repair it. Well, that is true, but what about iPhone batteries or just phone batteries nowadays? They're also glued in there. Uh, back in the old days, you could actually take out the, the Samsung battery and replace it. But maybe Samsung found out that uh, People rarely buy replacement batteries, and they don't. Uh, they, they, yeah. So, so maybe they realize that the 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 frequency or the probability of someone needing to replace the battery, either it's, it's kaput or if they just want a battery swap, 
is low. Maybe Tesla also figures out that uh, the chance of uh, having to take out the cells are quite low. I remember when I talked to the, uh, what was again, the EV clinic guy, yeah, uh, Vanya from, uh, wait, let me see if I can remember this this time. Was he from Croatia? I hope, I, hope I remember it right. Yeah, but he said that uh, most cases where there, when there's something wrong with the, the battery pack, it's not the cells in themselves. It's usually the PCB, or or something else usually that fails uh, due to some moisture or some shit and then they just have to replace those components and the battery cells they are in very good shape so uh, well, i'm guessing that tesla also figures this out that the cells are quite robust and as, especially if you seal them with them, like like, uh, like like you know the problem with the classic tesla model s batteries failing what, what was that moisture oh okay so if you just put some pink foam around it and just seal it then you shouldn't have problems with moisture then right yeah that's my thought also so i'm guessing that they know it the battery pack will fail some of them but the chances of something failing is 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 so small that they they instead optimize all the other 99.999 percent of the cars on the road right yeah, that, that's my, uh, my thought behind it. So, I'm not trying to always defend Tesla. I'm just trying to figure out why they're doing it like that. Because, uh, believe it or not, like it or not, Tesla is very, very successful. They have grown big and they make damn good cars on the road. So, they don't just... Well, okay, most of the time, at least, they don't uh, make the wrong decisions. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, what else is it about that Model uh, A? When will it come out? Well, I guess we just have to see it in March. Yeah, in, in one month now we'll hear how it is or if it's going to come or not. Or all that stuff. So, yeah, I have not watched other people's videos. I have no idea what other people are talking about. I just want to give you my opinion without any bias from other people's videos about this. So, I'm probably just very clueless about this. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I thought it would be fun to talk about it. Uh, and see how it how uh, i think it is so then we'll see yeah but anyway i think that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later